within us the courage to be stewards throughout all of our daily living with our gifts, with our commitment to you, uh, dedicating all of them to this offering to you, to the service of your name, and to the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus in our hearts, in our church, in our community, and in your whole world. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we do turn our hearts to the Lord in, uh, in prayer. I just want to, um, we're not going to take the prayer request today, but I just want to um, note Ernie remains in the hospital at uh, 404 St. Francis. And so he, uh, I saw him this week, and he, he was doing much better, looked a lot better. He's being treated for one of the, I think one of those infections he's going to get in the hospital. And it's going to take a couple of weeks of antibiotic treatment there to, to get that. They're trying to find a, a first time for him to be transferred into. But he really appreciates visits, calls, cards. And he had been, he had gotten, I don't know exactly how, but um, he had gotten a message somehow that he had brain cancer. And so he was pretty down to the dumps about that, understandably. But it turns out there is no cancer, and um, so he was very encouraged by that. He was very thankful. For whatever reason that is, he was, he was very, very thankful for your prayers and um, for, for the faith you encouraged him with. And so I just want to say, keep, keep it up. Um, keep, you know, he's been in there a long time, and that's an easy place to have you down in the So um, if you're in the area, stop by. And he's asleep, wake him up. You know, he's got plenty of time to sleep up there. Um, <laughs> And I would just mention Rodrigo as well. I'm probably doing a poor job of going in for him while we're coming today. He's finishing up his chaplaincy also at St. Francis, and he's kind of like getting, I don't know, like a hell of a week of chaplaincy. He's getting, all, getting all those hours in here at the end of the time, so he's doing a number of overnight on calls and whatnot. And that's why I, I think I passed him this morning. He was dead at all times, but they're probably so. So anyway, he's been in his prayer, but he prayed just to finish that up. But um, let's, um, why don't we turn our hearts to the Lord in prayer and um, <clears throat> Father this day we do thank you for the time to worship the time to gather in the strong name of Jesus as brothers and sisters to lift your name on high but to thank you most especially for your grace for your saving us for your choosing us before the world was made for sending Christ your son to die for us, for completely forgiving us, for giving us faith in Christ, hope of eternal life, for giving us your Holy Spirit as you have promised, which is a guarantee that we will receive our full inheritance. We thank you, Father, for adopting us as your children, uniting us to Christ, and we praise you because you are so glorious and you are so gracious. And I, and I pray, Father, as we think about how you have saved us, I pray that we would be a people that would know you better, that would trust you more deeply, that would um, rejoice more fully in the freedom you have given us from our sins and the grace and life you have given us. I thank you for the the laughter we heard this morning, the, the laughter of the redeemed, which is truly evidence that, that you are here this morning. Father, this day as we um, remember our, our brother and our friend and the man, Lord, we do thank you for his life. We thank you um, that, that he was no longer the man he used to be, but he was transformed by Christ. We thank you for the love he had for you love he had for those around him, for the difference he made in serving and sharing Christ. And I thank you now that he's able to crawl up in it and his Abba Father's lap, Lord, and to be fully with you, to abide fully with you, and that all pain and suffering and tears and sickness are gone. And so we rejoice in that. And we just pray as we uh, remember him and as we glorify you this day, Lord, that it would be pleasing in your sight. And Father, we do lift up every concern, every need, every prayer um, in our church family today. Um, those, those so many that have not been shared today, but we know they are real. And we thank you that you are the God who completes our prayers. And you know them. And so we pray that you attend to each hurt, each healing, each person suffering, each person in a dark place, every situation, every circumstance you. Um, Father, we pray your spirit would be with us, tending to the balance of our worship, Lord, speaking through your word, applying it through our hearts, opening our ears 
myself and the others that will share today that our word and honor and please give it to the In Jesus' name, we taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. God, all the for the best and the <laughs> Time, I am um, going to ask a few folks to come forward to, to share a little bit of a um, personal, personal reflections on um, the life and the man of uh, Dan Fitzgerald. And so, I guess Micah, are you going to say something? You come on up. If you had nowhere to go, 
sitting on his boat, sitting on my boat, and shedding tears and shedding stories of the, some of the tragedy that befell us and, and how in so many ways we walked the same path and encountered the same challenges. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking at a man back there, that, uh, a great man back there, Dan and me. So I just want to uh, kind of hit on that very quickly. I'll tell them my story. But in, uh, I believe it was 1998, Horace, Dan hit the docks in Charleston, and Horace was working on a boat across from me. And, uh, Dan never met a stranger. I don't know any strangers in Horace ever met, but they came together. And it was through that that he was introduced to Christ. It was through that that he became a part of the Kairos ministry. So many of you are here today to remember Dan and to say perhaps your final <coughs> goodbyes and we'll all join him one day in the company of saints, or I know he is. But Dan went to that first Kairos meeting and he told me three times he cried the entire weekend. He was so heavily touched and burdened with his own sin and so relieved that would be forgiven. Those tears were tears of joy. <laughs> not sadness, not regret, not apologizing for his past because he knew that where there was more, he would be forgiven. He would reside with Christ and all of the other heavenly hosts. Those of us who are saints will join him one day and celebrate his spirit in the crime of the day. So I just really appreciate everybody coming out. Thank you, Rod. Love you guys. Love you too, Mark. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Some of y'all may have read our newsletter last week and, of course, 